Hi and welcome to my next video and I'm going to be showing you how you can add a sequencer in Tasman to any um, patch without a sequencer um, so you can play that instrument like a sequencer so basically um, when you get Tasman um, you can install it but then you can there's a whole bunch of content that you can get for Tasman on the website and uh, you can see it here it's in this import folder and um, if you're if you're unable to figure out how to get it to set up um, you can email AA applied acoustics and they'll help you walk you through it um, because it's not that easy to install it it's not you know readily apparent or whatever so anyways here we go so let's go through a couple of the presets on Tasman 4 for people that don't know what Tasman 4 is it's a modular synthesizer so it has a builder section and you can put together elements and make a uh, in instruments okay so these are like sequence okay here's one that's not a sequencer so ba we're basically looking um, for an instrument that's not a sequencer. That we want to turn into a sequencer. And that I haven't already done to you. And then I'm kind of looking for an instru interesting instrument an interesting instrument uh, so well maybe we'll um, do one of these with the sample okay oh yeah here's a player okay cancel so yeah well maybe we'll do one of these sampling ones There's Croaky Human, and let's try co let's lo try loading a sample into Croaky Human. Okay, so here's our. Okay, now finally we're getting down to it. So when you find um, the preset that you want to turn into a sequencer, which I just did, it's uh, here it is right here. It's called Demon Croak. Demon Croak. That's what Demon Croak sounds like. basically just a sample player um, let's okay so maybe we can find some cool samples too Our ugly sample. Okay, so going to Builder, and this is kind of the back end, and then you just kind of organize everything a little bit better here. Just push everything down a little bit, and you can push down okay oh yay DSR okay so what we do is we go down and we look for the poly sequencer multi sequencer right here 
sequencers, multi-sequencer. So you grab that one and you drag it over here. And then you've got, um, here, here's a little thing that's going to make your life a lot easier. And, you know, for those of you who are geniuses like me, you basically, you take, you look for a patch with the V keys in it because those, you know, you can transfer, you can add the sequencer to the, those patches pretty quickly. Because basically, before I do it, I'll tell you what I'm doing. It I'm taking these one, two, three outputs from V keys, and I'm putting to them to the one, two, three inputs to multi sequencer. Then I'm taking. If you go down three, one, two, three, these th three, one, two, three. The fourth, fifth, and sixth outputs are going to be the same outputs as the V keys. So you gotta. You know, you can't lose track of those patches and you got to do everything like that. So here's a little trick too. And that is if you just drop this window down a little bit, this little information here tells you what multi-sequencer does and it'll tell you where the outputs go and stuff like that. So first three outputs can be connected to the first three inputs of another sequencer. So they're synced and then the next three outputs sim simulate the outputs of a V keyboard. So it's exactly like the V key right there. So basically what you do is, okay, we'll start with number one and we'll right, right click that and delete it. But before we delete it, you can see where it's going. When you click it, you see that red, you can follow it and it goes into the top of the VADSR. So you have to remember that. And then when you delete it, you put this one to here, boom. And then you go down one, two, three, four, and then this one is going to replace that right there. Now we're going down this one, follow it. See, so it goes to number three on the shifter. Delete that one. One, two, three, and then number two goes to number three on the shifter. Okay, now this one, it might be complex. This one goes to the bottom of the VADSR. And sometimes there's multiple cables. See, this one has like one, two, three, four. <coughs> You can just delete them all. One, two, three. So then you gotta replace them. One, two, I guess it was just two. Okay, yeah. Okay, well, and then once you have it all, and then you click the player button, and then okay and then here's another little trick go back to builder and then double click on that and you want to put that in row two just for layout sake see and now all that stuff is you know more visible it was way up here on the end but now it's right up here Sounds pretty horrible, eh? Okay, well there you get the idea, so um, uh, there you go. And oh yeah, here I'll show you a couple of other ones I did as well. Here's another one. And 
this one. And this one. Okay, and here's the last part. The last very, 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 very last part. Okay. Okay. Last part of the tutorial, quickly. Oh, what's this? Okay, so we go back up to... What was it? D Microke? Uh, cancel that. Okay, so here's here's Stephen Croak. Okay, now this is the tricky part. So um, I've had a little bit of problems with um, Tasman crashing my Cubase, and I think it was uh, I think there's some bugs in Tasman. Um, anyways. We'll go through it right now. So once you've created your sequencer, new preset with the sequencer in it, you go to your menu, file, save instrument as, and we'll call, uh, we'll call it sample sequencer. Samp seek. Okay, so then, <coughs> then it'll save sample seek somewhere. <laughs> okay, I don't understand how it works, but it'll go and save it somewhere. Um, so you have to go and sort of hunt for it. Paste. No. Hmm, I wonder why that is that you can't do that. It worked there. Okay, so great. So now we have an untitled folder. Let's maybe just copy that and try that one. Yes. Okay, so we finally did it, folks. <laughs>